All right, it's time for another edition of Krantz's Corner. And I'm going to be honest, I'm very happy about this one. It's a special one here, as you see in the camera view. Also, Ron McGill from Zoo Miami is joining me here in Krantz's Corner. And Ron, I'm excited to talk about this. It's been a couple of years since it's happened. Feast with the Beast is back. Ron, this is an exciting event for Zoo Miami. It's a huge event, man. This is, you know, and it's been gone for, this is three years it's been gone now, but thanks to the pandemic. So to have it finally come back to the zoo is really, it's a great thing for us. We're super excited. I think it's going to be better than ever. Um, you know, this is not like every other gala you see in town. I, I don't mean to diminish all the other galas and fundraisers they have, but generally speaking, you know, you're talking about going to a nice big hotel, big open ballroom, dance floor, band, singing, eating, dancing. That's about it. That's just the tip of the iceberg when you get to the Zoo Miami's Feast of the Beast. Because first of all, you cannot duplicate the zoo at night in any hotel ballroom. Right. Right. And when you see this place at night, man, we've got it so lit up. There's thousands and thousands of lights all over the place. You got animals that are going to be out. You know, you've got the flamingos as soon as you come in. What other gala do you go to and you're greeted by 30, 40 flamingos marching in pink right there in the front? And the great thing about it is also, you know, a lot of these other things you go to, it's a sit down dinner, you get your rubber chicken, you do your dancing and you're out. This is some of the best restaurants in all of South Florida. I mean, we got Chef Adrian's, we've got Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, we've got Bonefish Grill, we've got Naked Taco. They're all setting up little areas throughout the zoo that you walk through and you're basically sampling all you want of all those things, not to mention tons of premium open bars. Yeah, Ron, I was looking over the list of the main event and the foods that are there. And I'm telling you, Ron, this is worth the price of admission. Forget about everything else you just said, just for the food. The Absolutely. people that are going to be there. Wow, Ron. And, you know, and some of these restaurants, got, listen, and, and not that they don't deserve it, but I mean, I've gone to some of these restaurants with my wife and, you know, dinner for two will cost me as almost as much as the two tickets to get in there. That's and funny. I'm not getting all the other restaurants and the total open bar all night long. Not right. to mention the entertainment. We've got this great, you know, uh, uh, land to see lounge. This is beautiful, exotic lounge set up. There's all kinds of beautiful little areas. Uh, there'll be keepers coming out with ambassador animals. So you get these close ambassador uh, animal encounters. I mean, it's really, it's like no other party in South Florida. Again, I know I'm a little biased. I've been here for over 40 years now. I've been to a bunch of these, but I've also been to a bunch of other galas. Again, they're great, but they're not like this thing at the zoo. No, this is something. Feast for the Beast 2023 coming back March 3rd. That's right. The website, by the way, www.fwtv.org for more information, get your tickets and everything. I think this has got to be one of the, the coolest events because of everything you said. But I think I want to go back to what you said first. The zoo at night. Nobody gets to see the zoo at night, except for Ron McGill. But I'm saying like me, like you don't get to see it. I love the zoo in general, but I can't even imagine what it's like at night. No, it's fantastic. You know, you'll hear the sounds sometimes. You'll be walking through the zoo and all of a sudden you're, home, oh, oh. I mean, that kind of stuff goes right through your skin. It's fantastic to hear that. And we're going to be, be doing a special thing that evening for all the guests. We're going to be giving a special tiger feed. Wow. So that's going to be pretty amazing. We'll be string up a huge piece of meat on a rope hanging from a tree, and that tiger is going to go up there and get it and give you a nice little show as he eats. His, his little piece of the beast, the personal one for all of you. Everybody gets to eat that night. That's nice. It's very nice of you to do that. So it's adults 21 and over, right? That's what it is. Exactly. It's adults only because, again, we have open bars, premium right. liquors throughout the zoo. Of course, you want to drink responsibly. Being an adult, you're going to do that. Um, and we've got the, you know, the meet and greets with different uh, ambassador animals. And not to mention the meet and greets with everybody who's anybody in Miami. Because this is a party where people come to because they love it. And it's a great place to meet other people great people in our community. I mean, it's it's one of the best networking events you could ever possibly have, not to mention having fun. Now, what I want to tell people is this. It is, you know, you want to dress up nicely. You don't have to be black tie, all right? Okay. Don't have to be black tie, but we don't want jeans and t-shirts and flip-flops either. Having said that, ladies, my piece of advice, put on your nice dress, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be a floor gown by any stretch of the imagination, but a nice dress looking very nice, very, you know, professional-like. Don't put on the high heels, okay? Yeah. Y'all look really good in those things. I'm telling you, you look beautiful. I love a woman in high heels. But having said that, you're going to be doing some walking here, you know? And I want you to be comfortable. I don't want you to be like my wife. She puts on these incredible shoes that are just so flipping gorgeous. And she's walking. And an hour after walking, she's like, my dogs are barking. I got to sit down. I got to sit right. down. It's like, no! Wear the comfortable shoes. Come out here. Nobody's going to be looking at your feet that night. I promise. I promise. Come out. Have a great time, eat, drink, meet good friends, and keep your feet comfortable.
Right. All right. So outside of the obvious, unbelievable food places that are going to be there, the nights and the lights and everything at night in the zoo, what else is going to be happening there at the zoo that people are going to be able to see and do and, and just kind of Ron McGill it up at the zoo? Well, we're going to have a variety of music going on throughout the park, live music going on throughout the park. Uh, we've got, of course, different types of entertainment. I think there there might be some belly dancers or something like that. It's, there's little pockets of entertainment. They, you know, the whole goal of the gala of the fundraiser is basically you're on a safari at night at the zoo, an exotic, high class, well, well, you know, apportioned safari. That's what it is. But you're doing a safari like no other safari where you're going to meet these animals, you're going to have incredible food, incredible drink, incredible entertainment, music, lounges, you know, animals. It's all together. It's something that cannot be duplicated anywhere else except here at Zoo Miami. I got to refresh my email. I didn't get the invitation for a belly dancer. I thought I was going to get one this year for it. Uh, <laughs> no, well, I'll wait, I'll wait till later. I'm sure it's coming at some point here. Ron, this is a really cool event. Like I'm, I'm so excited. It's back. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for the zoo. I'm excited for everything around this because your events that you have there are incredible. Not just this one, but everything you guys do at Zoo Miami, well, yeah, you know, literally got, incredible. You know, we got the sip and strolls. We've got, of course, the holiday coming up. Uh, we got the, the Easter egg safari is going to be coming right. up for the Easter holiday, the spring break holiday. So there's all kinds of events and it's changing all the time. That's the great thing about, about the zoo. You know, it's an old saying that our founding director said many, many years ago, the zoo's a living thing. And as it grows, it continues to evolve and adapt and things are different. So it's never the same thing Every time you come back, you have incredible access. I get that at Zoo Miami, but some of the pictures you take, like they're ridiculous. Like you, I mean, what what kind of camera do you have? You don't have an iPhone 12 like me. I'm no, assuming, no, right? no, no, no. I'm, right. I'm very privileged to be a Nikon ambassador, so I've got some great Nikon gear that enables me to catch those images. And you know, the, the bottom line is this: that basically, I get most of those images from the walkway. Um, so the images that I take, most of them are, are images that can be taken by the general public. Right. The key thing is to get here first thing when the zoo opens. I always tell people that. If you want to pick a time to come to the zoo, come when it first opens. That's when the animals are most active, and that's when you get your, your nicest light early in the morning that way. What's a part of the zoo that you don't think people go to enough that's a big, big part of the zoo for you? For me, it's the aviary. Yeah. I think the aviary is the most underappreciated uh, habitat in the zoo. In my personal opinion, it's the single greatest exhibit in the zoo. Why? Wow. Because it exhibits an entire environment. You've got over 300 birds in there, over 75 different species. And people will walk in and they'll go, I don't see a lot of birds. You know, it's amazing to me. I say, sit here, just wait, and you'll see. I actually made a film of the aviary during the pandemic when nobody was going through. I made a film of the aviary and I highlighted all 300 plus birds in there with nothing but music and that sound. And when you look at this, you never think it was in any kind of under human care habitat. You would think this is all in the wild. That aviary shows so many different relationships between so many different birds, the dynamics, the aggression between birds, the nesting of the different birds, the different species, the songs, the sounds. That exhibit is everything a zoo exhibit should be. And that's right. why I, I urge you to go in there, sit on one of the benches by the waterfall right. or something and just watch for a while. You'll be amazed at what you see. That's incredible. What's the most popular part of the zoo, you think? You know, I think now it's probably the giraffe eating area. I mean, people love to go up to giraffe eating. There's something to be said about getting up on a platform, looking at a 15, 16 foot tall animal eye to eye, holding that your hand out with a piece of, you know, romaine lettuce in it. And this 16 inch long tongue comes and wraps around <laughs> and takes it out of your hand. It's, it's, it's a pretty unforgettable feeling. I remember the first time I saw that it was God, 30, 40 years ago when I was in Africa the first time. And they have that type of platform in Africa, in Nairobi. And I came back, I said, man, we got to build one of these things here. We got to, this is incredible. And the county at first didn't want to do it. They said, no, nope, can't do it. Too much risk management. The animal's going to hurt somebody. We're all going to get sued. So there was all that, you know. And then all of a sudden, of I think Bush Gardens made one. And they were making a ton of money and everybody was loving it. They said, hey, you know what? We ought to do one of those things at the zoo. Oh, huh. <laughs> brainstorm. What a what an epiphany. Ron, you had it, you had it first. You heard oh, it here. Right. You had it first, right? Oh, That's man, I'm telling you. Yeah, sometimes... Sometimes it gets so frustrating for me. You know, you just want, but everybody's always worried about what can go wrong and think of what could go right. You got to deal with the, the bureaucrats. Of course, that's going to happen now at that yeah. Right. All right. So let's go over this one more time. It's coming up March 3rd. The website's uh, www.fwtb.org. Explain once again what people are going to see. Does it sell out all the time? I feel like it sells out. It generally speaking, sells out. Yeah. Yes, it does. I mean, you know, there's close to a thousand people in the park Ooh. for that night. 
and it is just it's a banging party um there's two levels that you can go in you can go in the general admission is 250 dollars a person that gets you in from eight o'clock it says to 11 but really we're kicking people out of here at midnight it's, it gets ridiculous right. sometimes. um and then there's the beast keeper that's the real high-end thing with this you get in an hour early you have your own private lounge there's extra special restaurants in there you get special animal encounters that's 500 dollars a plate but it's it's got a lot of extra extra levels and, and and benefits to it. So I, you know, if you can afford to do that, listen, it all goes to help benefit the mission of the zoo. Now, benefit the mission of our conservation, of our education, of just trying to make this place the kind of place that can make the entire community proud. Ron, you are the best, the best ambassador for Zoo Miami and the best ambassador for South Florida. Whatever we do in South Florida, you need to be attached to it somehow, some way. I don't care I what it is. That, that's how I it always is. This was a special Crancis Corner with Ron McGill from Zoo Miami. Feast with the Beast 2023. It's back after a three-year hiatus. The website, once again, www.fwtb.org. Get over there. Taste some of the incredible food. And like Ron said, access at night to the zoo, which is not normally there. And it's going to be unbelievable. Ron, thank you for your time. Thank you, buddy. Take care. This was a special Crancis Corner with the man, Ron McGill.